In 2011, a small, pixelated animation of a cat with a Pop-Tart body zooming through space, leaving a rainbow trail behind it, exploded across the internet. You heard echoes! The absurd, endlessly looped animation of Neon Cat seemed to capture the internet's delight. He's got rainbow farts. <laughs> I think I got the idea. How long is this last? Well, I keep waiting for something to happen. Yeah. <laughs> is it going to keep going, or does it change colors or anything? Is this supposed to hypnotize me or something? Is it a way to test monitors to see how long it takes for someone to break it? However, while Neon Cat's rise to fame was undeniably impressive, this widespread attention came with unintended consequences, a curse of sorts for its creator. Chris Torres, who found his life changed in both thrilling and frustrating ways. Uh, it's annoying. Beneath the meme's bubbly surface lies a tale of digital fame's unintended pitfalls, the complexities of copyright, and the pressures faced by viral creators as they grapple with an internet culture that consumes and moves on. Neoncot originated as a playful illustration created by Chris Torres, a digital artist who initially shared it on Tumblr. This quirky creation soon found its way into the internet's bloodstream, drawing millions of viewers in a matter of days. It embodied the chaotic, rapid-fire humor of early 2010s meme culture, a pixelated cat, a rainbow, and an infectiously catchy soundtrack. When a YouTube user by the name of Saraj Rosoen paired Torres GIF with a chipper Japanese song titled Nya 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 Nya, the meme took on a life of its own. Within weeks, the video had amassed millions of views, cementing Neon Cat as an early symbol of internet absurdity. Within you know a couple of days or a few weeks of uh, posting it, Neon Cat like took off and became a viral sensation. So what was running through your head at the time and like how surprised were you to see people latch onto it like they did? It caught your attention. Like you're scrolling by, you see this really fast and colorful animation. You know, it's very eye-popping. And a lot of, and the big smile, everybody loves the big smile, and everybody, you know, kind of latched on to that. So on that day, I was actually starting a new job as like an insurance claim adjuster, and my phone was just blowing up. I was like, what's going on here? I'm trying to do work, and, and I can't, I can't because of my phone. And then um, a friend of mine gave me a call and was like, hey, did you see that cat video? And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, your, your work, it's on YouTube and it's got a lot of views. But then I started getting news that there were like some big companies that were actually filing for the copyrights and the trademarks of my work without like, without me even saying anything about it. There were like several people that applied for it. And that freaked me out because that meant that somebody was trying to, you know, pretty much take ownership of my art. But for Chris Torres, this unexpected success was both a blessing and a curse. While Neonkot introduced him to a massive global audience, the meme's popularity quickly spun out of his control. His creation was suddenly on t-shirts, websites, and in countless parodies. Yet Torres was left watching from the sidelines as his work spread, often without proper credit or compensation. In the digital age, ownership over viral content is a murky, and often contentious matter. For Chris Torres, keeping up with the legal and moral implications of owning a meme proved difficult. As Nyan Cat circulated, it became a target for commercial exploitation. Brands and internet personalities used the image without his permission, often profiting from its appeal. Torres, however, wasn't reaping the rewards of his creation's viral fame. At a time when intellectual property laws were ill-prepared to handle the fast-paced, ever-mutating world of memes, Taurus's fight for recognition became emblematic of a greater struggle within digital art and internet culture. He began issuing takedown notices and fought for acknowledgement, yet his efforts were largely unsuccessful against the tide of the internet's endless reposting and remixing culture. To many, Nyan Cat wasn't owned by anyone. It was just another digital sensation in the public domain. This lack of control over his own work left Torres frustrated as his creation brought entertainment to millions while he received neither credit nor compensation. The life of a viral meme can often be a double-edged sword. On one hand, it offers creators like Torres a brief moment in the spotlight and the possibility 
of newfound opportunities. On the other, it brings unexpected scrutiny and pressures. Torres's social media following exploded, bringing both admirers and detractors into his online sphere. People wanted more Neon Cat content, memes, and animations, often demanding that he replicate his initial success with equally quirky creations. Moreover, as time passed, Torres found himself increasingly associated solely with Neon Cat. As an artist, he wanted to explore new projects and ideas, but internet fame proved stubbornly one-dimensional. For many, he was the Neon Cat guy, no matter what other creative ventures he pursued. The curse of meme fame was that it threatened to overshadow Torres' broader identity as an artist, tethering him to a single work in a way that became creatively restrictive. In 2021, Neon Cat returned to the spotlight when Torres re-released the iconic animation as an NFT non-fungible token, selling it for approximately $600,000. This marked a historic moment, not just for Torres, but for the digital art community at large. It signaled a shift in the perceived value of digital art, showing that even something as ephemeral as a meme could be a valuable asset. However, this sale brought mixed reactions. Some celebrated Torres' success, seeing it as a moment of long overdue recognition and recompense for his creation. Others criticized the monetization of memes, seeing it as a commercialization of internet culture's free spirit. For Torres, this newfound revenue was a victory against the years of copyright battles and undercompensation, yet it also marked a somber reflection on how digital fame often doesn't translate to material success or creative freedom. Neon Chat's journey reflects a larger issue that many viral creators face. Internet culture's insatiable appetite often leaves creators burnt out, underappreciated, or outright exploited. Memes are created, consumed, and forgotten within days, if not hours, as people move on to the next viral sensation. For creators, this cycle can be demoralizing. They pour time and passion into something, only to have their work co-opted and shared without recognition. Taurus's struggles highlight the internet's complex relationship with ownership and creative credit. Many meme creators find themselves at a crossroads. Do they relinquish control of their work in exchange for virality, or do they try to hold on to their artistic rights, even as the internet pulls their creations in countless directions?